this is uh, Koiru and uh, this time we are going to go a bit more in depth on the gym ship of uh, the Euro PC and as I said last time I have not looked into all the connections on the gym ship uh, when we filmed the last video but now I have and I'm going to go into some detail of what this ship actually is doing and the fancy name Jim is just an acronym for joystick, EO ship select and mouse. So the question we are going to try to answer this time is Jim the bad guy. And to establish that we have to look into what the Jim ship actually is doing. And first I'm going to take a walkthrough of all the connections to this chip or most of them. We are going to ignore the ones up in this corner here. Because these signals are only used for the joystick and mouse interface and we don't have the original mouse or the original joystick. So we are going to ignore those one and those are just input for that purpose. So we start with the main connections and the address bus is the ordinary address bus. And that was it means in this schematic when it stands SA. It's system address bus. And the lines that are connected to this ship is the lines A through 9. So that's uh, 10 address lines that connected. And that means that this can have an address space of um, 1K or uh, 1024 addresses. And this is the data bus for this ship. But this is not the common data bus. And as you will see what we have done down here, this is the system data bus that's down here. And this is buffered through an LS244 chip and is controlled to the IO direct. And you can see that the G line, the output enable is always put to ground. So there is always a signal present on this IO data bus. But what signal we are going to look into afterwards. And you can see that this changes name. So when it's not the system address bus, it becomes the IO data bus. And that is what goes into here. And this arrow here that points both ways means that there are data going both into and out of the gym ship through this data bus. Yeah, and this is just the way the, the IO data is uh, connected. For those who didn't understand my try to, that didn't understand me trying to um, simplify this schematic. And you can see that the IO direct that feeds into this uh, LS245 data buffer is coming from an output from the dim ship itself. So this controls the direction for the data on this and that means when the gym ship has to send something it makes the direction so that so that data goes this way in this buffer and it wants to read it makes that the data is going that way in this buffer so that was the easy signals of this chip and we're just going to take um, a walkthrough of the reset signals again and this is not uh, throughout walkthrough as we did last time is just a reminder the input reset from the FA 2010A chipset is uh, fed into this through the LS244 U9 chip that just uh, a buffer and this is an active high signal so when this is put low this chip is working when it's put high it's put to reset and you have an output here and this is an auxiliary B reset that we spoke about last time. And as far as I can see, it only inverts the signal for use with the CS0 and CS1 inputs to the serial LS222 chip and nothing else. So as far as I know, this is just the inverted B reset. And the output reset signal to the video chip or the V reset we covered last time and it connected to the U38, that's the video ship, and the U42 that controls the output to the CGA connector on the back of the computer. There's a lot of other inputs to this uh, gym ship, and we are going to cover most of them here. 
we can see that we have an S in front of this EO uh, read or EO write command signals. And I find that every time this uh, connects through a LS244 gate or it's buffered, then it's called S. In other cases, it's, it's called the, the system bus or system signal when it's um, with an S in front. But as you can see here, it has the S in front here and it's going through this gate. This is common signals on all IBM compatible computers. And we have the AEN signal, and that is a signal that tells the system that what's going on now on the, um, the data and address bus are direct memory access, and it's not the, the CPU that has initialized this data read-write from memory. And here we can see the same. It's buffered through an... Um, the same chip actually, and it has got an S in front of the name. But this is just a pass-through buffer that only makes the fan out better for this chip, I suppose. And the ALA signal is actually a common signal on all 8088, on 8086 based computers, because this is the signal that allows the computer to multiplex the address and data bus so that the size of the ship can be much smaller because the pins are shared with the address and data bus. And the 8088, it's the lower 8 bits that shared. On the 8086, it actually all 16 data lines are shared uh, with all the address lines. And this is buffered through uh, three LS373s three, uh, uh, or latched. Yeah, the mem read signal is also a common signal on all IBM PCs and it's the memory read command. So when we read from memory, this line goes high and this is unbuffered from the FE2010 and there is no S in front of it. The SDAC signals is one of the signals that's buffered again and this is the DMA and knowledge for the different channels and this is fed from the uh, FE2010 and there are two DMA channels available on the gym ship and that is 0 and 2. And this is signal that's used to control that no there are other devices not the CPU that is controlling the bus and the DMA controller is built into the FA2010 chipset it's not a discrete chip as is in the original IBM PC. The CPU clock is the 4.78 something megahertz signal that we found last time. And this is generated in the FA2010A chip and it's buffered through the LS244U8 chip. And this is fed as an input to this chip, probably to synchronize it with the CPU. The M16 clock is actually generated um, for main use with the um, floppy controller, where it's fed directly into the, the floppy controller. But this is a 16 MHz clock, and it's fed into this chip. The COM int and COM out is for generating interrupt and signaling that the serial bus has received data. And it's also for generating a system interrupt, and that is seemingly controlled by the gym chip where the gym ship gives probably out uh, interrupt when the um, serial bus has received data. And one more thing, the gym chip is really the PLA of the Euro PC. For those of you who know the um, electronics of uh, Commodore 64, you know that the PLA is the one that controls the chip select. And this is the chip select for the RS-232 chip. This is the chip select for the parallel printed chip. And these four are different chip selects and other control signals for the floppy drive controller chip. We won't go into details for this now because this is irrelevant if we don't get some other things to spin on this computer. And we have the chip select for the real time clock, the M3002 in U36. And this is actually the killer of this computer, or rather the nickel cadmium battery that was placed alongside it. And this ship is a bit corroded. I have not verified if it's working or not. It is a bit corroded on the legs, but I have no idea if it's damaged inside. 
And the CX yoke out signal is something we are going to cover in the end of this um, video. And this is a bit of a mystery to me and I can't figure out for sure what this really does. But I'm open for suggestions. I will explain that uh, later and it has something to do with the video outputs or video memory or video reading or writing somehow. I'm not really sure. And the, the, the common signal, the EO uh, channel ready, uh, is fed through all the four major chips on this board. It's um, actually controlled on each and other chip because it signals that this device is not hogging the bus and is connected to the gym, the FA2010A, the ISOBUS and the uh, uh, CGA video controller. And this is fed as an input to the FA2010 chipset and it controls the FA2010 chipset for what kind of display device is connected. And there probably are some good reasons for the FA2010 to know that, but I'm not sure how this actually is communicated to the video chip from the FA2010. And this is kind of a story of the gym chip beat biting its own tail. We told you earlier about the M16 16 MHz signal that fed into the gym chip. And this is actually fed out again as a 4 MHz signal to the keyboard controller. And the keyboard controller is actually the first chip to run on this uh, motherboard as this is controlling the reset for the other devices. So the gym chip is actually functioning as a clock supplier chip and dividing chip even though it has not been reset yet as the B reset signal follows long after the clock signal is supposed to be generated. And this is just a divide by 4 of the 16 MHz signal so it's not a very complicated circuit. And these are other signals to the video controller uh, chip. We have the mono clock. That's also we are going to cover a bit more later. We have something that's called VIDN, video enable. And we have something called the mono. And that's probably what tells the um, CGA chip if it's color or monochrome output. And we of course have the V reset that we have covered earlier. So then we are just going to start measuring and working on this to see if we can reveal some more mysteries from the, the gym ship and see if there actually is something working around here. And as I said earlier, I have now measured most of the pins. I hopefully have established that there is no missing connections from the gym ship to the other ships that is supposed to be connected to. But of course I could have missed something. So let's dig a bit deeper now. First we need to check that the circuit actually is running and we do that by checking the A0 address and the uh, CPU clock signal and everything looks fine. We start where we left off last time and measure the V reset signal to check that everything is okay and as you can see this is high so the V reset is actually engaging and resetting the um, video output. To make uh, things easier, I'm going to change the, the earth clamp on the oscilloscope to the resistor that we placed in the socket for the keyboard controller. As you remember, pin 1 on this was ground. Yeah, I'm going to show you this a bit more systematic so that you can see several the waveforms at once. I think that's a better uh, solution. So we start with the address lines and that is not a very happy sight. And as you can see, it's only the A0 and maybe A5 that's giving a, a normal signal or what we should expect. Of course, there could be some of the address line that is not used for the kind of traffic that is here now, but that we have signals on the A0 means that we probably should have something on the others too. And A1, A3, there we can see that there are struggles going on. There are signals that's trying to compete on the address bus. So we have to uh, look into this and maybe we have to uh, desolder some of the bus drivers to see what's going on. 
but we are not going to desolder anything before we have measured all the other input signals to the gym ship to see if we can find out why it doesn't work as it should and next are the data lines and here we can see that we actually have traffic on all of them and i don't i am not triggered them with single shot so there might be some bad triggering that uh, make these signals looks a bit shady but they are quite okay all of them and as we saw earlier it's the iodir signal that decides who is controlling the boost if it's the cpu or if it's some io device and we see here that the iodir signal lies low what does that mean and here you have another one of my cramp as much as you can into one slide kind of drawings and here we can see that when the iodir signal lies low then the direction of the signal is outwards from the io device and if it's the gym chip or some other chip that communicates on the bus that's hard to tell because we need to look into the chip enable signals to establish that the IO channel ready signal is meant to be the signal that is signaling that some IO device is wanting to communicate on the data bus, but this signal is permanently high wherever I measure it. The address latch enable is the signal that controls if the CPU is doing data or address lines on the common bus. And we also have the memory read signal that's originated in the FE2010A. And this signal tells us whatever memory should be read or written to. And both these signals seem to be working okay. Earlier we said that the clock signals looked okay, and I think they do. And we have three clock signals. We have the system clock, the 4.70 something clock that originates uh, from the FE2010. We have the 16 MHz M16 clock and we have the 4 MHz clock that goes out from this chip and feeds the keyboard controller chip. The YIM chip generates the IRQs for IRQ 2, 3 and 4 and that is because these devices are controlled by this chip. And all of them has been high all the times I have measured them. But apart from the serial connection, I don't know what these ERQ lines actually are used for. They probably are for the proper mouse joystick port. We are quickly running out of input pins to talk about on the gym ship, but the SIORC or IORC and IOVC, so IO read control and IO write control signals on the gym chip both of them have been high all the times i've measured them and we also have the s dac signals and the s dac signals has also been high all the times i've tested them and all these signals originates from the fa2010 chipset the vid signals that we discussed earlier that is an input to the fa2010 chipset to tell the chipset what kind of video is attached and this is kind of peculiar because both with one and with zero is stuck to low that means the video type is set to none so this is about everything that's surrounding the gym ship and as you can see there is a lot of mystery still to uncover with this but we do have to take some side step now to see on the cs oaks signal and what's going on there but i promised you a look into um, the um, cs aux signal and what in the world is going on in the output circuit for the video and i don't think i can really figure everything out about this and this is the complete circuit from page 13 of the schematics in the service manual and I am going to simplify this for you by taking out the bits that is not included in what we are looking through here. And as you can see, it gets a bit simpler. And we have tried to mark here the way the signals goes. You have the IO data, you have the V reset, you have the V signals from the video chip, and you have the RTC bussy down here and you have the CX Oaks and you have the 
moon clock that I think to be monochrome clock, but I'm not sure. And I also included the function table for the 74 LS 374 down here, so that we actually can see what's going on. And we can see down here on uh, U43 that these pins here, they are connected together. So that means there won't be any situations where the C and the output enable has different values. They will always ha have the same value. And that you can see in this truth table over here. Here they have different values. Here they have different values. Here they have the same value. And the same down here. They have different values. But you can see that this is... You can see that when this is high, it doesn't matter what the C will be. And if I take this to the next page and do some description of this. The IO data we already know. The, the IO data is the simplified versions of the um, data bus. And the chips that is using this is this chaos here. And it's the gym that uses bit 0 to 7. It's the R to C clock that uses bit 0 to 3. The parallel port that uses all bits and the serial port that uses all bits. But down here we can see that in this description here we don't use that. We use the IO data 0 to 4 and 6 and 7. So bit 5 is not included in what we deliver out here. But we still have it connected down here and here it's connected to the RTC BC signal. So the RTC BC signal is actually connected here to bit 5 of the IO data. And why? I'm not sure. And you can see this the same down here. You can see that the moon clock is going up here and is bit 7. And bit 6 is this over here for weight state for memory or something. And this is connected to ground, I have checked, so this will always be low. So bit 6 will always be low, and bit 7 will follow the monoclock, and bit 5 will follow the RTC BC. But the madness does not stop there, because you can see up here, if the V reset is set to low, then the contents that's on these pins here from the V signal will become apparent on the output of this. And they will go to the CGA out. And they will also connect down here to the five first data bits here. And they are even uh, overlaid with the 500 hertz. It stands here in the schematics. I have not been able to measure this. This is not pulsing on my DM chip. And they are connected here to the same bits. So what we are getting out here on the IO data is what we have up here overlaid with what we have on the mono clock and this is put up on the io data bus and what for i can only guess as the video ship is not reading this it has to be the gym ship that is actually using this for something but to what i'm not sure this is a very strange circuit for the output of video and I have not been able to clarify if the gymship has some other roles in the graphics than just controlling some of the outputs. This is, um, is not very intuitive to me, and I've looked into this a lot. And the big crater of battery damage, you saw that we have on this circuit here, we have the RTC BC, and the RTC BC signal is the only output signal that actually present on the clock circuit. But before we go into details on the clock circuit, on my schematics and every schematics that I have found on the internet, we have this contraption here that suggests that there is a fault in these schematics and that this circuitry here actually is like this. But in my case, that's not so. It's exactly like in these schematics when I measure out things on my PCB. So why they have done this and I'm not sure. But this is at least not right for, for my PCB. There might be some other modifications out there that I don't know anything about. 
And what is the control signals for the RTC clock? We do have the CSRTC up here that controls the, um, the ship enable on this pin. And you have also an output enable and a write signal here. Because this bus here is multiplexed, so it's both acting as a 4-bit address bus and a 4-bit data bus. And this controls what's going on on the bus, and these two controls the output. And since the ship select, all of these are permanently high, at least with the running of the gym ship that I have now. And that means that the RTC busy is also permanently um, high. Yeah, I can see now that this could be a bit confusing, so I have included the scope signal for the RTC busy signal down in the left corner. And the scope picture that's in the right corner is actually for the crystal oscillator on the M3002 and it's the 32.7 kHz signal for the real-time clock. So what this really does I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned the RTC seems to be, uh, do be running. The uh, clock signal, the uh, 32 kilohertz clock, is uh, running and all the pins measures okay, but as this is put in a um, not selected state, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to test this without taking this ship out of the circuit and testing it. And there actually are a test procedure, but that's quite a task, time consuming uh, task to test this. So I think that's it for this uh, video. It has been running now for uh, at least 25 minutes I think and I'm not getting any further without doing some more measurements. Now you have seen all the things I measured around the um, gym chip and my next priority will be to measure what's going on on the address bus into the gym ship and other places in the system. There might be something buried there, I'm not sure, but I need to figure out what's going on there before I can do anything else. So, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you want to be notified when we post new videos. It will really help out the channel. So, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.